As missionaries, we are to treat this world as our home. If I want to share my life, I want to give my life to all people. To reach to the poorest of the poor, where nobody cares. Even you don't know, but you bring your heart and your love, that's enough. So our history internationally began with Mary the Passion. She was a French woman, so it was from India that she travelled to Rome to ask for permission to start a new order. That is a missionary congregation for women. She waited in Rome until Pope gave her an answer and she received the news on the Feast of the Epiphany, 6th of January, 1877. Mary of the Passion then took it as a message, so therefore the missionary aspect again is so strong, you know, to bring good news to the world. It's the Epiphany, you know, manifestation. The history in Singapore and Malaysia began in 1953, when um, the first missionaries were expelled from China. So some of them landed in Singapore. We didn't have a place to stay, so we stayed with the IJ sisters at Victoria Street. Yi Ping Liang helped us to buy our first property, Shalom House, the one in 49A Holland Road. And then bit by bit, we bought up the land that the British Army left behind. That's when the kindergarten started. And so Marie Stella went on for many years. At the age of 15 already, father one day, Call me lah. She said, Rosalind, there are sisters coming from China. Do you like to go and help them? In the beginning, I just cleaned the toilet, cleaned the place where they can work and all these things. Surely, they asked me, can you come and help me to register the name because we want to start a dispensary there in Aogang lah. So I was very involved with the church. One day she told me, hey, would you like to come and visit us? Shalom House, that is the first house, uh, FMM there. So when I went to the sisters there, they embraced me and then brought me to the chapel. Such a welcome, I, I fall in love. Sister Lillian LaBelle, she had been working in China in the vestment department as well. So when she came to Singapore, she began this workroom to make church vestments for the church. Huh? It was a place that also helped the local women who didn't have much income, didn't have much education to also have an income. I saw the story of our mother founders and her big love for people, no matter what culture, what religion, what language, what country. He said the world is our home. The sisters, he said, we would like to come and teach the vocational school. These girls who were over age had no school to go, but they learned typing shorthand, dressmaking, I taught them mathematics and religion. I begin to understand our sisters better. That is a congregation I want to give my life. In the Aokang area, we had our first school, which was the High Singh Girls High School at that time. And I was asked to be the principal of High Singh Girls High School. I was very frightened. I was very young, but we always obey. It was a Chinese high school and gradually it has to use English medium. One Indian girl was sent to a school. Of course, she was very out of place. But I took her in and comforted her and said, don't worry, even though you are Indian, you are very much loved and cared for. Whatever difficulty, you just come and let us know. Kid Hosui started, there was a big fire there. There was this social unrest, you know, and people were very poor in those days. The FMM sisters were there, started Nazra Centre. In Bukit Hoswin, we had a small kindergarten below and the sisters lived above. I remember visiting that place. You have a room and then the room was divided into two, one for to use as a chapel and the other one was like, okay, that's where the sisters sleep, you know. So it was a um, condition that was very challenging at that time. But to be with the people and to go through life with the people as they go through it, I think that's important. And you have the children of the lower income Singaporeans there. They are like gangsters. But then we have also met that some of them have become very successful in life. 
I met Sister Georgina Liwanak, F FMM sister, and she invited me to vocation camps, no? At one of the vocation sessions we had, an adoration of the Eucharist in St. Clair's, you know? When I was struggling to respond or not to respond, I always felt unworthy. Like, who am I to, to be a sister, you know? And it was at this adoration when I felt, I felt so loved by God. God was worthy to be served with all my heart and all my being, you know? And that if I were to respond, then He would give me all the graces I needed. So after the Wishet, I made the first vows in this chapel. Then they told me, I sent to you to Malaysia. Malaysia is a hospital, Asunta Hospital. I'm scared of that body, I'm scared of this, I'm scared of that. How to be a nurse? He put me in a very funny place. Huh? Not trained as a nurse, he put me in charge of the recovery room. And not trained as a midwife, he put me in charge of maternity ward. God is possible, everything is possible with him. So I keep on, yes, yes, yes. So that's how it went on. I arrived in Singapore in 2013. Sister appointed me to become a school chaplain. I say, Sister, you're not wrong uh, to send me there. I'm not understand about Singapore education and right? the system. I have to learn English even from students. which uh, can help me with the grammar. So they are like, oh, okay, Sister, can. So they will help me. And after that, I have to, in front of them, how to pronounce that. So that's what I learned. The words of our mother founders, don't be afraid. If God send you, He will lead you. They were calling for missionary, go to Long Long South America. So at that time, I just couldn't believe it. I'm a ward sister in charge of maternity ward, fully placed. Now you want to send me to the jungle. Dear Jesus, what are you telling me? I said, please uh, give me time to think. Mission Sunday in Rome was a big ceremony for all those who are going to the mission. So I was chosen to go to receive the mission cross from the Holy Father. He dropped the cross on my hand. I says, Christian, when I look at it, nearly died. The Jesus complete, no left arm. Then I started to cry, I started to cry, because the Holy Spirit just come to me and say, hey, you are going to Paraguay to be the left arm. I just cannot forget that. Then all the time in Paraguay, I was the left arm of Jesus wherever I go. When I was prayer office, they sent me in the Bogol. Kids, they study in the government school, but they don't have a religion teacher, so I have to go there. But there is, sometimes they stone us. We have to find a way how to make ourselves strong and not frighten. God, if this is what you send, us to help your people, he will protect us. So what happened is that one completely unconscious for two or three days that brought me there. Then I just tell Jesus, you have to take over. I don't know what to do. I cannot feel the pulse. I cannot feel anything. Thing come to where? Coca-Cola. I took, give the money to the lady. I said, see whether you can buy a white Coca-Cola. White Coca-Cola is bright. Lah. After some time, and then she came in with a bottle, one liter. Our friend haven't wake up for a few days. Suddenly, Coca Cola, Coca Cola. Here, the Coca Cola. Open the eyes, saw show the bottle, and show him the bottle. He just grabbed the bottle from me, and then three, four days, no makan, no nothing, and then dehydrated. Now the body is completely gone. Now this sprite is saving. I really don't know why Coca Cola come to my head. So these are the miracles. If God not there, I really don't know what to do. I had gone to Kenya for a mission for six years. I really saw the poor at close hands. It was a time of drought and we were going to drive out to buy water. As I stepped out our gates, there was a whole line of women with water, jelly cans on their heads. They were bringing water to us. And I thought, and these are the poor who really were ministering to us. So that is a missionary of FMM. Na. The charism is like that. La. Missionary, prayer, a lot of sacrifice you make. But at the same time, you receive more 
blessing than sacrifice that you made. When I reflect on the life of the sisters, when the FMMs first arrived, right, it's hardship that they went through. It's that passion for the mission, their fidelity, that has actually built up the province, Malaysia and Singapore, endured for these past 70 years, you know? And even now, as we move on to become a region, Japan, Australia, Singapore, Malaysia and Myanmar, we are not starting something new, but we are continuing something what they have started. As Franciscan Missionaries of Mary, we come from different parts of the world. We come from different backgrounds, different nationalities, and we are called to live together under one roof. So this gives to the world a message that, hey, it is possible to live together in peace despite our differences. Everybody wants to become a good person. But for me, to become a religious is not only become a good person, but you give your life to others. Whatever God wants me to do, I do what I can to offer every action to the glory of God. So this is my, my happiness. Whatever it is, I try to live one day at a time until God calls me. That's my story. I'm the left hand of Jesus.